welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. A few weeks ago, I participated in what can only be described as a pen fanatic feeding frenzy. I did a video about that experience, which you can view right here. However, the day before the release, I was contacted by Alan Light. You'd know him better by his fountain pen review channel, What I Ink. Alan suggested a collaboration review. I mentioned the new 355 was about to be released and we decided to get the same pen for review. What we're going to do is put our reviews together and then add a live video chat we had this week about the pen. So this will be an extended video review which will be posted both on Alan's channel and mine. So let's not waste any more bandwidth and get right to the pen review right now. Okay, finally, my package has arrived. Been waiting for this for quite a while. Of course, which package have any of us been waiting for for a short while these days? This is the Pen BBS 355 Misty Mountains. So first of all, we have to get it out of its box. I'm excited. And we have our typical Pen BBS box. This is the 355 Misty Mountains. It's uh, color 79. But this sleeve comes off. And we have the ubiquitous Pen BBS box. Here are our 355 instructions. So this is nice that not only are the instructions well thought out and clear in terms of diagrams, they are in English. Here's our pen in its condom. This is my first time with this color. First glance, the 355 looks exactly the same in terms of body shape and style. This resin is very nice. And this reminds me, this will probably date me, but uh, back when I was a child, back in the 1800s, I, uh, when I was in grade school, grade one, two, three, we'd all have a Crown Royal cloth bag full of alleys or marbles and we'd play marbles in the in the schoolyard and we'd save our finest ones and some of our finest ones had these beautiful swirls they were clear and had swirling bits in them there is our gold and silver two-toned fine mini food a nib yeah, everything else about the 355 is the same. I'll go over this in detail when I do the review. Now that I've inked the pen and have been writing with it for a few days, let's take a good look at it. What I'm going to do is go over the parts and features of this pen and show some size comparisons, provide some measurements, and then do a writing sample. I have been writing with it, but I cleaned the ink out and cleaned the pen out so that I'd be able to demonstrate how to ink it up on camera. And usually I would ask you to stay tuned after the review where I discuss what I like and what I don't like about this pen. But this time we will cut to a recording of Alan and me discussing just that topic, what we like and what we don't like. I'd like to mention here as well that there's a new feature on YouTube now, which allows you to find various parts of YouTube videos more easily. This is the chapters feature. On regular computers and mobile devices, you can touch the bottom of the screen here uh, and, I'll, and scrub to various parts of the uh, video. But now, that little line along there is uh, segmented into chapters. So if you want to skip a boring section, like this one right here, you just jump ahead. It's very cool. While we're looking at this improved version of the 355, I'm going to be making some comparisons with my old 355 and here it is in Aurora. It's like the Misty Mountains is the blue version of the Aurora. The overall shape and size of the two pens has not changed with this new improved version. The flashes of deep blue and light powder blue combined with large areas of open crystal clear acrylic make this pen endlessly fascinating. Just wait till you see this filled with the ink that Alan and I have decided on for this pen. Okay, from the top, we see a flat-topped tapered finial made of the same acrylic as the rest of the pen. 
I like to keep mentioning this about Pen BBS. Most of them have the same acrylic resin throughout, and I think that's just wonderful. The finial incorporates a screw thread, and on these transparent models, you can see it a little bit better. You see those threads in there. So that finial, that acrylic finial, has threads uh, turned into it, and then it screws into the top of the cap and holds that chrome ring which holds the clip in place. So there's no screws necessary to keep that uh, finial and clip in place on this pen. The clip is the Pen BBS sword style clip that you can find on many models. I'll list the models right here. It is very springy and very usable. The barrel is straight until we get to a rather thick cap band, which has embossed Pen BBS on one side and 355, the model number on the other. The cap band tapers down to an almost non-existent step at the barrel, and the barrel is straight until about here where it tapers ever so slightly until another chrome ring and the blind cap, which unscrews. And then the taper continues on the blind cap, and then there is a flat bottom. The cap unscrews with one two full turns to reveal a tapered section with a small flare at the end of it in the same material, as I said, as the rest of the pen, and a number six Pen BBS fine mini food a slightly up upturned tip nib. This one's in fine. In looking at the section, I made this image for my review of the 456 Niango but it serves to illustrate again the variety of sections available from Pen BBS. I like this section very much. They are all so subtly different and yet each well matched to the design of the overall model of the pen. Kudos again to Long for, and his design team for these wonderful variations in sections. Let's look at the nib again for a moment. Again, more variety from Pen BBS. In addition to having EF, REF, F, and RM nibs, that's extra fine, round extra fine, fine, and round medium nibs. They also have nibs that are all gold, all silver, have cat's paws, or snowflakes, or rats, and two varieties of two-tone gold and silver nibs. This on the 355s is the gold with silver highlight on it. And the nib on the 456 is silver with gold. The nib unit screws in and out of the section just that easily. So you can replace it with another nib unit with another nib. You can also pull that nib out of there, out of that collar. And then you can replace that with, say, a Bach or a, um, a Nimacine or a Yovo nib. The one thing to be aware of with the 355 model is that the cap doesn't have a lot of clearance. And that has not changed. I mean, you can see through there, there's not a lot of space right there. There's maybe a millimeter in there of cap clearance. Here's my Pen BBS 309, and I've swapped in a Bach number no. six nib. I find this fascinating because this. Bach nib came with my Moonman M800 and I didn't like it and I replaced it with a Pen BBS nib. Now the M800 has a Pen BBS nib and the Pen BBS 309 has a Bach and everyone, except Leonardo fans of course, is happy. The cap does fit on the end of the pen but I don't call this posting at all. This is where Alan and I will disagree. I don't think that this pen can be categorized as a pen that posts because it's ridiculously long. Who is she? That's Margaret Woolworth, Carrington Von Schumacher, Chanel Astor, Livingston, Comte de Saint Exupery, Mountbatten, Windsor, Armani, Roosevelt, Von Trapp, Wickenham, Hearst, Montgomery, Rockefeller, Onassis. Huh? <gasps> My God! You mean the heir to the Woolworth, Carrington Von Schumacher, Chanel Astor, Livingston, Comte de Saint Exupery, Mountbatten, Windsor, Armani, Roosevelt, Von Trapp, Wickenham, Hearst, Montgomery, Rockefeller, Onassis, Fortune? Exactly. She goes by Pip. Pip? Pip. And heavily back weighted. It's one of the things I don't like about the 355 and the 492 and the 500. 
I think that Long should redesign all three of these models just to please me. You are a selfish jerk. Well, that's what I think anyway. My mom used to say that's what I think all the time. She'd write me emails with her various opinions and sign them with the acronym TWIT, TWIT. I'd say, Mom, why are you calling me a TWIT? And she'd respond, Oh, no, dear, that's just an acronym for that's what I think. Now, I'm not so sure it was an acronym. While I'm talking about my mom, I have to digress a little here. Feel free to fast forward. I won't know. Use those chapters. My mom did a lot of lecturing. She was a teacher and a leader and was very, very smart. But she was always giving her opinion. While she was explaining things to people, she'd always wag her finger. My sister once admonished her that wagging your finger like that was rude when you're talking to people. So she switched to this finger instead. So be careful. Your solution might be worse than the problem. This pen feels awesome in the hand, unposted, which actually offsets my concern with the lack of postability. It is just thick enough and just long enough to be perfectly balanced in my hand. Now let's look at the filling system, which has attracted so much ballyhoo. This is the improved part of this pen. Bulk fillers work like a syringe. So here's a syringe. So you have a piston, you push the piston down, you suck up some ink. The problem is, what do you do with this rod once your chamber is full? Both Pen BBS and Conid use a retractable piston rod by attaching and disengaging the rod from the piston before and after filling. Conid uses a patented and brilliant piece of design engineering to affix and disengage the piston rod from the piston. The old version of the 355 used a screw. So there's screw threads on the end of that piston rod and you pull the rod back and turn those threads so that it engages with the piston and then you push the piston out and use it like a syringe. And then you pull it back and there's a little ridge right there on the end of the piston that you pull back and it clicks and holds that piston in place while you unscrew the rod and put it back. Easy, right? Well, some people had problems with this. You would over-screw, over-tighten that, and then when you tried to pull it back to hold that piston in place and then rotate this screw, the piston would rotate with it and you were stuck with a pen full of ink and a piston that didn't move. That's why Long and his group have engineered a solution to that problem. Let's disassemble this end piece to show you what the solution is. I don't need a wrench anymore. I just give that a little bit of a tug and it opens up. So the new improved version changes the piston capturing mechanism with a very clever bayonet system. Turn to screw the rod into the piston like that. Use the piston to syringe up your ink. Turn the rod again when it's back up to engage the bayonet and then it's held in place so that you can unscrew the rod and push it forward again. So the way all that looks in the pen is you unscrew the blind cap like you would normally, retract the rod, keep turning in that same direction to engage the threads into the piston and capture it and then you can push the piston down suck up your ink and then you rotate the opposite direction and that bayonet has trapped that piston to allow you to unscrew the rod. Then you keep your pen in the ink, push the rod back down and then close the pen. We'll demonstrate that with ink. There's also one more change that they've made they put a pin through that rod that holds the blind cap on. And you can see it just protruding here out on both sides of the, of the piston knob. 
the old version was just captured in there somehow in acrylic. And some people had problems with those falling off. I think it's a bit of overkill, but it fixes the problem. The pin is a little bit more visible on these clearer finishes than it will be on my amber, Niango, and Galaxy versions that are still stuck between here and China. Come on there. Before we try the new mechanism, I did want to show these two systems are completely interchangeable with each other. Here's the new one. It has exactly the same chrome ring. So I can put the old system in the new pen and I can put the new system in the old pen. Of course, you end up with a Franken pen. It's a lie! Oh, I know what it feels like to be God. But it shows you that they're exa using exactly the same parts. The only thing that has changed has been the the piston and the uh, and the bayonet mechanism. Now let's give this filling system a try. So as I mentioned, Alan and I have chosen Robert Oster's Soda Pop Blue as our ink. He has a full bottle, but I just have this little sample. I like to put my sample vials in this little ink miser that my son 3D printed for me. Makes them more stable. Now I'm gonna unscrew the blind cap. Pull the rod, twist. Then we're going to put the nib in the ink down to the section. And we're going to syringe up some ink. There we go. And you notice that there is a bit of air there. We're not getting a full fill. That's why we do this procedure twice. To understand why doing this twice will give you a better fill, just remember when you put the nib in the ink, you've got all of that air from the nib to the section to the bottom of the piston to start with. And that's the air that goes back there. So now that I've done it once, that whole part, the piston to the nib, is now full of ink. So now if I put it back down in the ink and I push the syringe down, it's going to fill the ink back up, but it's also going to push out a bunch of air. And you see the second time we get a lot more ink. Now that extra bubble of air is because I actually ran out of ink at the bottom of that vial. Now, there's another important part. We now need to disengage that rod. It's important to keep the pen over the ink while you disengage that piston. And now that the bayonet has actually trapped that piston, I can unscrew it. But when I push it down, it's going to displace some ink. As you can see, it's dripping out. This is natural for these kinds of bulk fillers. This second pass kind of technique works really well with cartridge converters, piston fillers, spring fillers, whatever system fills from putting the nib down into the ink. With eyedroppers and cartridges, of course, you have to wait for gravity to expel the air from the nib and feed. I should also mention here something that many people forget about this and other pens that use shutoff valves. When you screw the blind cap down, there's a little rubber gasket on the end of that rod. That little rubber gasket, when you close the blind cap down, it plugs the bottom of the section. So there's the bottom of the section and that rod goes right into that hole. This is a feature. It allows you to close the valve and keep changes in air pressure from forcing ink out of the nib and into the cap or into your pants or your shirt. If you're on an airplane, changes in air pressure will expand and contract the volume of air in your pen. Of course, liquid is not compressible, so it will be forced out by the air. Basic hydraulics. But when you write, all the ink you have is what's in the feed and the section. Unless you unscrew the blind cap, which disengages that little plug and allows the ink to flow through. While we have the pen relatively full of ink, uh, let's remove the section and measure how much ink we've got. About two and a quarter milliliters of ink right there. And there you go. Now let's look at some size comparisons. 
So here is the improved 355 next to a Pen BBS 456, a Pen BBS 492, Year of the Rat, a Pen BBS 500, Spring Filler, and a Pen BBS 323. Now let's look at it up against some non-Pen BBS pens. Here it is with a Lamy Safari. a Pilot Metropolitan, a Faber-Castell Loom, and a Conklin Duragraph. Now let's look at them posted. As I said, I think the 355 is ridiculous posted, but not as ridiculous as that Conklin Duragraph is. Yeah, the cap goes on the end, but boy, you can't write with it. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll come back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the new improved version of the Pen BBS 355. This is Misty Mountains. And it is a fine steel nib. And the ink today is Robert Oster. Soda Pop Blue. And here is the swatch card for it. Here it is next to Hiroshizuku Kanpeki, one of my favorite inks. And this is Gerbin Kyanite du Nepal, which has a little bit of that sheen from the soda pop, but a lots of shimmer as well. And let's check the wetness. This pen is fairly wet for a pen BBS. And let's listen to it right. This is very, very smooth. Uh, almost no feedback, like glass. And some reverse writing. It's very dry, but it actually does write, and it's not too scratchy either. And some quick writing. It keeps up very, very nicely. And there you have it. The Pen BBS 355 improved version in Misty Mountains. Now I'll turn it over to Alan's review from his channel, What I Ink. And you'll find a link to Alan's channel in my description as well. After his review, we'll get together and discuss what we both like and dislike about this pen. Take it away, Alan. Hello, pen pals, and hello, Doug. How you doing? What we're talking about here today is the new and improved Pen BBS Model 355 in the Misty Mountain finish. Now, this is a improved version of the tried and true Pen BBS 355, which came out, oh, I'm going to say well over a year ago, probably somewhere about a year and a half ago or so. Um, 
This is a bulk filler style filler. We'll go into all those details uh, in a minute. So as you can see, it's obviously the exact same size and form factor and what have you as the uh, older model Pen BBS 355. The, the uh, details of the filling system are what make it a bit different. Um, Proud a decently hefty pen. It weighs 29 grams. Um, and in terms of size, well, it's obviously the same size as the uh, 355 compared to a Pilot Metropolitan and a Lamy Safari. It's, uh, it is a bit bigger than either of these pens, but can we compare it with other, some other pen BBS pens? We certainly can. There's not a huge amount of size difference among these pens. We're talking about pens that are all fairly comparably uh, uh, size in the ballpark with each other. Here's our f uh, uh, 355s, uh, both the uh, new version, uh, both new improved version and the older model. We have a 268, which is probably the shortest one of the bunch, but not by very much. We have a uh, 456, which is probably the longest one of the bunch, uh, but again, just by a hair. And uh, we have the 500, which is uh, probably the girthiest of all of them, but again, right around the same size wise. So these uh, pen BBS pens are all roughly running right around the same size of each other. In terms of the basics, what we're looking at, uh, at here is a um, screw to uncap pen. It takes two full turns to unscrew. It does post, it posts actually very, very well. Definitely a little on the back weighted side, but I'm a diehard pen poster, so I'm going to post it uh, regardless of how much it back weights. It's certainly plenty long uh, to use unposted, um, but again, I do like to post uh, to post my pens. Doesn't have any kind of a cap liner per se as a separate piece, but what it does have is um, the inside of the cap kind of carved out to mate with the upper end of the section, so you do get a good seal there um, as you would uh, as you would uh, expect um, the cap band is um, uh, same as on the other one has the pen bbs logo and simply says 355 um, has the traditional pen bbs sword style clip as we see on many many other pen bbs pens um, the material on this misty mountain is just magnificent you get plenty of clear spots to see the uh, workings of the cool filling mechanism, which we'll get to shortly. And you have these beautiful ribbons of various shades of blue running through it. Really, really nice. Um, finials came out really, really nice on this material as well. Just a, a really, really gorgeous, gorgeous material. You open her up and you get a very, very common Pen BBS two-toned number six nib in fine. Um, these nibs write very well, and we will see and I expect uh, as much uh, when we see that on the writing sample shortly. The um, section does unscrew. Um, you got to be careful. There is O-rings here that you do not want to lose, but uh, that unscrews for cleaning, and you can have, and the nib unit will unscrew from the section, and you could pull the nib and feed as well. This has those pen, that pen BBS feed with the very very fine, delicate fins, so be extra, extra careful when pulling the nib and feed on this. All right, let's talk about the filling system here, because that's what everybody came for. So what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew this cap on the end. We're going to pull the rod down. What's going to happen is we're now going to turn towards ourselves to engage the uh, end of the rod in the piston. We're going to keep turning to disengage the piston. And what we're disengaging, as you can see, are those little cogs which connect to the end of, um, uh, of the barrel here. On a camera lens mount, we call that a bayonet style mount. Um, this takes the place of a simple sort of snap in place mechanism that they had on the old model. That's the major difference between this and the old model. So what we'll then do is draw up our ink. We will then turn to re-engage that piston, free the rod. The piston is now locked to the back of the barrel. We're going to push this forward, minding the fact that we're going to be displacing ink while we're doing that. So we're going to keep that in our ink bottle and we're going to cinch it down. And that should give us quite a large, um, uh, a full amount of, uh, full amount of ink. Um, again, two, two main differences between this 
and the uh, older model. Again, the, the, main, the main difference and the primary driver here is this, um, is this uh, mechanism that locks and unlocks this piston here on the end. And the fact that this cap here has a reinforcing rod running through it. As you can see there, there were some problems on the older model which didn't have that, and that was simply th um, that was simply um, just attached, I think, with adhesive. And uh, when that knob detached, it was sort of freely spinning in the um, around the rod. So that really uh, they had some problems. My 355 did not have any problem with this cap on the end, but I think a lot of people did. So this kind of really fixes that problem for good. That is for sure. In terms of disassembly, uh, the main thing you want to be looking at here is the flat edges on the end of this metal threaded piece. Um, again, on the on the uh, prior model, that piece was um, that piece was that piece was plastic in there. But now this is metal. Uh, even so, I wouldn't put any kind of a metal tool on that to unscrew that. I would use a pair of nylon jawed pliers the first time you do it. If you, subsequent times, you should be able to do it with just using uh, some, getting a good grip on that and then being able to unscrew it as I am, uh, as I'm doing here. And then you'll get a good look at this mechanism. So we can see this mechanism in action now that it's out of the pen. So basically what happens is you're bringing these teeth down, they're engaging in that section, then you're unscrewing this rod, pushing it through, pulling it back, engaging, disengaging those teeth, and then letting that go through. So that's essentially the, the mechanism. It's very simple, but very, 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 very effective. Um, and again, as you can see, the disassembly and cleaning on this is quite easy and quite, uh, quite nice, actually. And uh, this screws back in place. And again, I wouldn't use any kind of a tool to retighten this. I would just uh, finger tighten that. Uh, going forward. Um, like I said, you will need to use a tool the first time you do it. I would recommend nylon jawed pliers and not putting any kind of a metal tool on that because it is going to be kind of delicate. So I think the only thing left would be to ink this guy up and see how it writes and let's do that right now. Okay, Doug and I both pick Robert Oster Soda Pop Blue. Good choice. It's going to go well with this uh, pen. So we're going to ink that up with uh, with Soda Pop Blue. So let's see how that goes. So again, what we're going to do is um, unscrew this cap here. We're going to pull that piston back. Make sure that works. There you go. So. I'm going to submerge. Let's draw up some ink. And that got mostly full on one shot, but I'm going to do it my three times for good luck. Two and three. So there you go. That's our three times go around on the uh, on the ink. Uh, we're going to turn this to disengage. Now again I'm going to when I push this rod back I'm going to make sure the ink is in the bottle because it will displace a certain amount of ink as the rod goes back in. And then I can tighten this back up and we are good to go. So that was our first time full fill on this pen and it seems to have uh, filled very well. That's an awful lot of ink that this um, uh, filled with and it filled well first time out of the gate. Good job Pen BBS for a fairly new and cool filling mechanism. I guess the only thing next is to see this pen right and I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, what we're writing with here is a pen BBS number 355, and we're going to call this uh, Revision 1. <laughs> um, so this is the first revised version of the 355, um, and this has a number 6 seal fine 
nib. Um, and um, this writes really, really well, like all these number six Henry BS nibs tend to do, so I'm very, very pleased with it. This is a fairly stiff nib, though, so you're not going to get any flex at all with this nib. But again, it does write quite well, and I'm very pleased with it. This section is very, very comfortable um, to write with, to hold, etc. feels quite good in the hand, um, and... Um, um, you know, it writes well. It does feel a little bit back weighted with the cap on. Of course, that can easily be solved. But again, I don't mind the back weighting. I just really like to post my pens because I'm really just always afraid I'm going to lose that cap. Um, and what is a pen without a cap after all? In terms of wetness, I would say this is probably about average to slightly above average in wetness. Um, but again, just a really, really nice writer. Um, and um, I think they did a great job. Great job on the filling mechanism. Great job on the execution of the pen. This material looks absolutely spectacular. This Soda Pop Blue ink, this was Doug's choice of ink. And this was a great call, Doug, because this ink just goes great with this, uh, with this finish on this pen. Good call. Um, so that is about all I have to say about this um, this uh, pen particular but one thing I will say when it comes to both Doug's videos and my videos if you could please like share comment and subscribe we would both really appreciate it so that's about it I want to thank my partner on this review, Doug, for um, for joining up on this, and I hope you guys liked it. If you did, and this is well received, maybe we'll uh, do it again with another pen. As always, until next time, have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay, here we are with the collaborative part of our review. And I wanted to start by thanking Alan for inviting me to do it a collaboration video with him. Uh, when he talked to me about doing this, um, he said we should review the same pen. And we were just waiting for the 355 to come out. And I think it was a, a day before it hit uh, the Etsy store. Yeah. And there was that feeding frenzy that happened. But I said, you know, maybe we shouldn't wait the day before and I saw it come up on eBay early, and I sent a message to Alan. And I said, it's up on eBay. We're going to get the same pen. Um, and so I bought my Misty Mountains, and there's Alan's Misty Mountains. We bought them almost at the same time, uh, which I think was really cool. We bought them at the same time. We're going to do the uh, same ink and so forth. So I wanted to thank you, Alan, for inviting me to do this because I thought it was a terrific idea and added a lot of excitement to an already exciting uh, opportunity with the, the fountain pen so yeah thanks Doug Th thanks Doug yeah so it, this is going to be fun um, it was actually interesting we got the same pen uh, uh, I don't want to give too much away but we even have the same ink in the uh, in the no, pen no, no, no. Um, I knew this would have been a good pen for us to collaborate on because it, it was for sure a pen that we're both going to buy with uh, okay, for sure yeah. I actually have another one I have an amber one on the way uh, uh, three well. more on the way oh yeah three more on the way okay yeah I rarely actually I rarely like go through collecting all the colors. No. What I try to do is like go through the different finishes as I, as I go through the different models. So this will be yeah. one of uh, this will be one of the few that I actually have multiples uh, of. Unless it's one the only ones I do that on like super super cheap like wing wing sung or Jin Hao pens. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll go through all the colors. Uh, go through. Well, all I, the got, but I anyway, got caught up in the feeding frenzy, so uh, so I've got a few more pens than I expected to get. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah, what we, we wanted don't to don't do, we always don't we always yeah. Anyway, yeah, what we yeah. wanted to do was we wanted to go through what I usually do is I talk about uh, what I like and what I dislike about the pen. Uh, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to discuss our likes and dislikes, and then we'll see whether we're, we're on the same page. So, Alan, why don't you start? 
Okay, sure. So obviously my likes are stuff that applies probably to almost all pen BBS pens, the build, the finish, the materials, the particular finish on, uh, on this guy, the Misty Mountains is just really, really a great finish. I didn't have this finish in any other uh, pen BBS pen. So it was a good uh, acquisition for me. Value, of course, the there really aren't any pen BBS pens that you can call overpriced. The most expensive one would be the 492. And even that I think is a bargain at, at, uh, at what, at what that is. Um, what I'd say specific to this pen is um, the improvements they made over the previous model, I think is a big plus. I think the ink capacity in general is a big plus. Um, another thing that I like again, um, uh, I think you could apply to almost any pin BBS pen is their standardization of parts. If you buy like their parts kit, those parts will work in almost, almost pretty much universally any of the pen BBS pens uh, that, uh, the, that they, that they offer. So the standardization of parts make it really sort of consumer friendly. And speaking of consumer friendly, they're pretty easy to disassemble. I mean, my, I'm talking about minor, minor, uh, uh, effort to, to disassemble them. They, don't, they, they want you to be able to take it apart and maintain the pen. So those are my uh, big, big uh, sort of uh, pluses on, on, uh, on, uh, on this guy. What about you? Well, I, that's a lot of good detail. And I think I agree with all of that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I sort of look more broadly. Uh, I think on this pen, I love the nib. And yeah. I, I think I said that in my writing sample that I love this nib. Um, I didn't want to touch the nib. I wrote with this for about a week, I think. Uh, and I didn't want to touch it because I wanted to do the review first. Uh, and the nib came in the typical kind of a little bit dry for me, mm -hmm. uh, which is really typical for the Pen BBS uh, fine nib. And so I wrote with it there. And then as soon as the moment I finished my writing sample, I got the nib and I got my uh, gapping tool out and I gave it a couple of flosses with that. And now I, I actually said to myself as I was writing on the paper, oh my God, it just <laughs> is, it's now one of the best. I was just telling you before we started recording that my Moonman M800 with the pen BBS nib in it is my favorite pen of them all because of the nib this has now come to the top of the list so the nib after i slightly adjusted it and i mean slightly <laughs> just slightly is just spectacular um so one thing i will say though as we both have soda pop blue in this soda pop blue yep. is a particularly slippery yep. smooth ink wet, a wet I, was, ink. I have i i I've used soda pop blue in a uh, uh, ebonite feed Ranga pen for a mm. while, um, and it flows just magnificently from uh, from that pen as well. So pen, it's a very free flowing, smooth ink. So combining that with the experience yes. with the nib, you're going to get a fantastic experience. Uh, on and this that's pen. what that's the situation with my M800 as well. Because mm. The M800 <laughs> has um, uh, KWZ Azure number five in it, which was very that's a beautiful ink. Beautiful ink, yeah. And so yeah. I agree with you. Uh, another one that would be great in here would be uh, Konpeki. Um, Iroshizuku mm -hmm. is a very slippery, nice, lubri nicely lubricated ink. So the other mm -hmm. thing I like about this pen is the section. The section on this pen and the balance in my hand. Overall, as a pen, it balances in my hand just beautifully. I kind of put it up against all my other pens, just unposted like this to see mm -hmm. how it felt. And I can write for hours with this shape. You know, it's funny you mentioned it because I don't, this, I think I just the first time I've ever held the, I post, I'm, I'm a consistent poster. I think this is the first time I've ever held the pen unposted just while we do it. Just since you mentioned uh, what it's like yeah. unposted. Cause I, well, like, and I said, we will get, we will get to my dislikes in a moment because you, <laughs> you post it. I can't post yeah. it. I think it's just way too long uh, posted. Mm. And it's one of my, my just, we will get to that in a second. I too love this acrylic. You know, try not to spin it around too much because yeah. we get wavy here mm -hmm. uh, this acrylic as you did some close-ups i did some, i mentioned that it reminds me of uh alleys with marbles when i was a kid we'd have a uh, 
a Crown Royal bag from our my dad. Uh, he would have Crown Royal rye, and it comes in that cool cloth bag with the pull string. Mm-hmm. And I'd take all my marbles and my alleys to school with me. And you'd save all your best ones. Mm. And this reminds me of that. It's endless. I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. 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 The yeah. other thing you, meant, you, t- you touched on this as well is the filling system. And I'm just going to bring up my Aurora here for a moment. The yeah. top one is my old style 355 Aurora. This was given to me by a viewer. Thank you, Sam. And this one is the new one. And I wouldn't say with this one, the old version, that this is the best filling system that they have, right? Because of the, I can it's deal twitchy. with it. It's twitchy. It it's definitely twitchy. twitchy. But yeah. this one now is almost foolproof. And the amount of ink, I measured it. I got two and a quarter milliliters of ink in this, and there's still a bubble. So yeah. I could have filled it a little bit more. But uh, so the ink capacity and the foolproof, me- you really can't hang it up anymore. Yeah. And so that filling system was another big thing on my list of likes. You want to talk about your dislike? Do you have any? Yeah, yeah. Now, some of this is almost, again, not specific to this pen, but it's just sort of me- it's sort of coming into crescendo in this pen. I think the trim on pen BBS pens is starting to bore me a little bit because I think they're, they're, they're the 492 is the exception. Now, again, they should do more stuff like the 492 where the trim on this pen is very unique. They don't have it like, now granted this is a limited edition, but this is a nice, unique trim. This looks like 10 other pen BBS pens. And I, I, it's just starting to bore me a little bit. I think they need to do a little bit more with the trim. Nothing wrong with keeping the uh, geometry of the clip the same. Look, Pelican makes, you know, I, I was going to actually, let's uh, use this as an example. Hold on one second. You could edit this part out. <laughs> so, so here, so again, yeah, so so here nobody would go ahead and accuse Pelican, which makes very high end pens. The trim on these pens, all the way, you know, and we're talking about some very expensive pens here. The, the trim is all identical, right? So you can, obviously it works for Pelican. So maybe I'm being a little unfair to uh, to uh, to Pen BBS here, but I would just kind of like them to sort of just uh, mix things up a little bit on the trim because I'm it's starting to just bore me a little bit on the trim, right. but they're offsetting that by putting kind of an exciting filling mechanism in there. The other thing that I have a uh, gripe is I think they need to give better nib options. Now I granted that they're primarily selling into their local market and the local market is fine point nibs almost exclusively. Now I understand why that's the case, but I could still have what I want. And what I would like to see them is do some stub nibs, do some broad nibs, do stub nibs of a couple of different sizes, et cetera. You know, that would really, really be nice. The fact that you're really dealing mostly with a fine nib and every once in a while they'll throw in a medium nib, you know, again, that's starting to get a little old. I will say that in terms of a number six, fine, steel, inexpensive nib, they have mastered that. They literally have mastered the making of a font. If you want a number six size nib in fine, that's inexpensive. They have completely nailed how to do that. I'd like them to maybe take that expertise and start applying it uh, in a couple of things. So the nib, both the nib options and the same complaint with the nibs and the trim. It's just, I think it's getting a little stale in terms of the nib options and, and the trim options. And then the other thing that I'll have to say, and this might be controversial, and I mentioned this in my review of the 492 actually, the filling system on a lot of these pen BBS pens, be it this one, be it the 492, they're cool. And there's a sort of wow factor about them. They're close to being a gimmick, but not quite being a gimmick because they actually work well. So that makes makes them not a gimmick. However, if let's be realistic, if you really, if the goal is really to maximize the ink capacity in the pen, then just get rid of the filling system altogether, make it an eyedropper and call it a day. Um, But that's not what they're trying to do here. They're trying to make like a cool filling mechanism 
you know, they're doing the right thing from a marketing perspective. They want to create yeah. a filling system that you as a fountain pen enthusiast take one look at it and say, I must have that pen. That's what happened when we looked. We all saw the, the Instagram post of the 492 and, mm -hmm. took, and, 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 and saw that and said, I have to have that pen. I will not be able to sleep nights until I have that pen. If that pen comes and goes and I don't have one, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. I mean, that, and, that, was, and it does, that was... It does show how clever they were on Instagram yeah. as well. Yes, they're very, very they clever. Didn't, they didn't just put up the picture of or that little video that they did of the magazine. <laughs> yeah. They put yeah. up the patent from the 1950s to show yeah, that where this, this has got some historical perspective. Fascinating, right. right? So I gotta have right. They're doing they're doing all of that right from a mark from a marketing perspective and for yeah. who they're marketing that to, et cetera. Like realistically, nobody other than a diehard fountain pen enthusiast oh, yeah. is gonna take the is going to take the trouble to drag a magnet up and down the bow of a pen to fill. I mean, it's not that's not a mass market product, right? That is a yeah. niche, that is a, a niche uh, a niche product. But they know exactly what people in that market yeah. want. But to your point about the eyedropper. The 380, yeah. the 308, and the 480 right. both have yeah. they have yeah. those two types of pens that are already yeah. Yeah. eyedropperable, and they're and right. they're set right. that way at the factory. So yeah. they've already got an O-ring on them. So if you yeah. want pens from Pen BBS that have a lot of ink capacity and they're cheap, thirteen ninety nine yeah. for a clear 308. Great deal. <laughs> so so um... in, in terms of my dislikes about this pen, yeah. uh, I only have one basically and that's the fact that it doesn't post now you claim that it does post i say that this well is by, by don't post you mean it's not practical when you post it or is you it's not mine, mine, oh yeah yeah mine it physically posts i mean it, it oh yeah you know yeah 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 you know yeah, i could i could glue this cap onto the end and it would be called posting <laughs> look look i po i i'm not a i'm really not a good judge of that because I, I post any pen that physically you can put the cap on the end i will post it um and write with it that way so I, but i'm a bad like i said that's i i i realize that i'm not a typical user when it comes to that i am so but paranoid my, that i lose the cap yeah that, yeah that, no. uh, and it uh, makes sense in a lot of situations like i don't i don't yeah, have yeah. to post a pen and i don't dislike right. a pen that doesn't post i love the 323 it's a writer's yeah. pen the 323 yeah. is a fabulous pen doesn't post, yep. isn't designed to post. But right. here we have a four five six. This right. is this is the Niango four five six. This is a vacuum filler, but look at the end of this pen and how it's designed. So you know that Long and the boys and the girls over in China know how to design a pen that has a tapered barrel that can post. Yeah. And this yep. pen yep. posts beautifully. So if I'm going to carry a pen around and I don't and I want to worry about losing the cap, the four five six is I would like to see the three five five have that tapered barrel and taper that cap. Were you not happy with the way the five hundred posts either? Probably then because no. it has that the five hundred's got that little notch. You would think it goes all the way up to there, but it just stops. No, and that I was very disappointed when the five hundred came along and had that little step down. And I thought, oh, it's going to post, it's going to post, and it didn't. Because I love this filling mechanism. It's great. What about the 2.6? Do you have a 2.6.8? I do not, no. Yeah. Oh, see, now the 2.6.8, again, vac filler. Yeah. It's got that severe tape nice on the end. And, yep. and you, would pr you would probably like this because, first yep. of all, it's a small pen to begin with, and it really goes on, it really goes on pretty, pretty good. So this might be something you would like. And so i got to ask you. Um, yeah. What about speculation on the new model of the pen BBS, the 487? Now, Biney said it was going to be magnetic in some fashion. Magnets are involved, she said. What model do you think is going away and which one is what, this new one? No, no, what I think it's going to be, if I had a guess, I think, we're, I think we're talking about a 355 with a magnet in it, effectively. Really? I so think that's what I you're going to see this I think, pen. I think what you're going to do is you're going to see you're going to see this pen yeah with 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 that trim and all that and what they're going to do is they're going to take the magnetic piston mechanism put it yep. in there and put the the essentially if you look at the fin even if you look at the way the finial is threaded yep. on the 355 you could probably yep. just thread the magnet right in there 
and not even really change the design of the cap very uh have to change the design of the cap very much so if i had a guess yeah. not that that's what i want to see <laughs> yes yeah. that's definitely not what i want to see but of course i'll buy it anyway but that's not the point the, um uh, but but my guess is that you're going to see something like either the 355 or possibly the 456, but I think more likely the 355 with the magnet in it. That would be my guess. My guess they're, they're, is... They're evolutionary rather than... Rev the, four, the, 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 the 492 putting to the side, they tend to be yeah. very evolutionary rather than revolutionary. So. But my thinking is they made this limited edition 492 yeah. with all this change in hardware and all this... The, right. The cap is a completely different shape from any other 10 BBS right. pen. They've got all this machinery already ready to, to make a pen. All they have to right. do is change the hardware and make right. this a production version and call it the 487. I think we're going to see that this is the pen. This is the 487 if you take all the year of the rat uh, emblems off. I hope you're right. I would rather see that. I, yeah, I hope you. I hope you're right. I, I would. I think that's something. I think I would rather. I would be a more eager buyer of that than another pen with this trim line with just just the magnetic yeah, filling yeah. mechanism. Because the idea would be you you apply all the finishes we see on the three five five and the four five six, mm -hmm. maybe the four eighty. Uh, so mm -hmm. we get to see this in Galaxy, or we get to see this right. in Aurora. Or we get to see oh, it in, it. Yes. in smoke, oh, kind of smoke. smoke. I want to see it in smoke. Or, or smoke, in smoke, smog, uh, smog, smog, smog. smog, exactly. smog. I meant smog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 In yeah. smog. Yeah, that's a nice right. one as well. The problem is there's too many. There's too many finishes. You could really go. It's incredible the number, the variety of bodies, nibs, and finishes available on Pen BBS. I don't see that. I asked in one of my videos. Someone tell me another pen company that makes this variety of finishes models and nib options in these price ranges I, you can't name one. Oh no no, no they close. don't make nobody makes that many nobody makes that many finishes at any price no at any price okay, i would like to see a couple more nib options to go with the materials that that would to yes. me to me need to be the the that that's to me the the thing that really needs to complete the equation they certainly have nobody's even come close on uniqueness of filling nobody nobody has the filling systems they have so i i did want to say thank you very much and make sure that everybody out there like and subscribe to uh mr like, uh, what like I comment like, and subscribe comment, you gotta do all three uh, like comment and subscribe <laughs> yeah to both of us and you'll yeah. probably see us again in one of these collaborative videos thank you for watching Thank you very much, and see you next time.